Today for question and answer, I'm going to cover a topic that comes up quite a bit. I didn't know it was so controversial, but I get so many comments about this subject, and it has to do with primitive traps. People always ask uh, different questions about primitive traps, but the most common are the legality of it, are you allowed to do it, and the ethics of it, and the viability of it. Is it really a viable method in a survival situation? So I'm going to cover those topics now. So we'll start with the legality of using primitive traps. And I need to mention that every state and every country has their own laws and regulations regarding trapping. So I'm not familiar with everyone in the world, but I am familiar with the ones where I live in Oregon in the Pacific Northwest. And trapping as an activity is highly regulated. What we have here is the regulations put forth by the Oregon Department of Fish and Wildlife. And they list the conditions you can and cannot trap, what animals you can trap, what you must use, and to legally trap here in the state, you must first take a trapper's education course, uh, take a test for proficiency and knowledge, and then get a license and renew that on an annual basis. So you have to actually make a huge effort to be legal to trap. And part of that is knowing the regulations. There's different animals, different seasons, different traps you can use, different scenarios that are legal and not legal, how often you have to check your traps. So a true trapper, uh, that is ethical, will follow all regulations, get all the licenses, and uh, the reason those laws and regulations are in place is to protect the resource. They don't want to over trap animals. Um, trappers are very knowledgeable in what equipment to use, what works, that species specific in what scenarios, and how to process those pelts and sell them at market, and uh, that's not something that I do. What I'm interested in is the primitive traps and survival traps. Now I consider a primitive trap something that you can go into nature and build out of natural materials. A deadfall, in many cases a snare where you twist natural cordage. Those are primitive traps. Minimal equipment, maybe a knife or maybe use stone tools. A survival trap is something that you bring in your pack and are able to construct. Say I have a length of paracord. I can make traps that can catch animals with that. That's not truly a primitive, it's a survival trap. But I consider both primitive and survival traps in a similar category, very different than modern traps. So um, how do you become a proficient primitive trapper if it's not legal in most scenarios? Well, I've studied the regulations and found there are scenarios that you can use primitive traps. The regulations list each species that's considered a fur bearer and has its own season. Um, there's protected animals, migratory birds, um, endangered animals, threatened animals. There's also a category of animals called unprotected or pests. And so those are the ones that I can focus on. Mostly rodents and there's a list of them including skunks. So one of my trapping videos I have a skunk. Where I live skunks are considered unprotected animals. Now you can't just go set these up in the wild because there's protected animals out there that might accidentally get in your traps. And to go set those up and catch those animals could be a huge violation. In my state, some states have game wardens or game agents. In my state, uh, all hunting and trapping is uh, enforced by the Oregon State Police. It's an amazing organization that's charged with enforcing and protecting our wildlife, and they take that very seriously. So if you go and violate wildlife laws, trapping, hunting, they will pursue you and charge you for violating game regulations. Going up and setting primitive traps in the wild, especially putting them on YouTube, could land you in a lot of hot water where I live. So what are the scenarios I can use primitive traps for? I can trap unprotected animals in buildings, barns, sheds, chicken coops. I never trap out in the wild for animals. I have fun building traps, but then I disable them before I leave. But I do trap unprotected animals in buildings or barns where they're causing damage or killing my chickens, for example. That's legal, and that's pretty much the only scenario I know of where I can test out these primitive traps. And it works really well. I feel it's really important for me to not only be able to know how to build these traps, but I set up motion cameras to see how animals interact. There's a huge difference between knowing how to make a figure four deadfall and getting the nuances right where you can actually catch animals. And for me, that was a lot of trial and error with motion cameras, studying how animals entered the traps, what worked, what didn't. And that leads me to my second uh, controversy of primitive traps. A lot of people send links to videos. Of, there's different modern trappers out there that have posted videos on YouTube that absolutely do not like primitive survival traps. They're very disparaging and say they don't work in any scenarios. Two of them in particular have posted videos. One was a seven part series with a pretty vulgar title. And I have to admit, I have not watched that seven part series because uh, I just wasn't interested in what they had to say.
based on their title. But one video that was really interesting to me and I'll mention is by a man named The Meat Trapper on YouTube. And he did an open letter to primitive trap people. So if you just search open letter to primitive trap people, you can see his video and his thoughts. So I tried to watch the Meat Trappers video with an open mind and go through each point. And my thoughts on those for everybody that wanted to know is he has a lot of good points. Uh, the biggest one is that there's a lot of primitive survival people out there who think that because they know how to build traps, they can survive in the wild by trapping. It's a viable way to get food. And it is very difficult to do that. I've been doing a lot of trapping and the Native Americans did a lot of primitive traps, but they would set up by sheer volume uh, hundreds of traps for a family to try to catch small animals and feed their families. And that's a huge amount of effort and you're gonna have a lot of trouble uh, surviving with just primitive traps. It's a great skill to know how to do to supplement your diet, but if you don't know how to collect wild foods, especially seeds and bulbs and high calorie foods like that, you're gonna have a hard time. Another thing they talk about is the effort going into putting traps is more than what you get out of it. In most cases, that's true too. If you're gonna have to hike miles and miles setting up traps, you're probably gonna burn more energy and you're gonna be uh, slowly starving. So if you're interested in learning how to do primitive traps, you need to know that that's a skill that can help supplement, but it's not gonna save you in the long run unless you're really proficient or have a lot of animals you can catch. Another point that I agree with the meat trapper on is that if you're gonna go into the wild and bring supplies, why not bring a modern trap? That is absolutely true. They're much more efficient at consistently catching animals and they're very lightweight. So if you're going into a situation, bring a modern trap. Making primitive traps are gonna be way more effort for way less results and a modern trap you can set up and consistently catch. Now that is also a crutch or a downfall having that mentality. If you're thrown into a survival situation and you don't know any primitive trapping skills, uh, trapping is going to be out of the question. We could see this in the last season of Alone, season three. There was a professional trapper there who would say, there's animals around. If I only had my metal traps, I could catch them. And unfortunately, he was not able to catch any food because he didn't know how to do the primitive traps. Um, that is a huge crutch, only knowing how to do modern traps, even though it's a good skill to have. And I feel that you should know how to do both. So there are also several points that I do not agree with in that video with the meat trapper. And mostly it has to do with uh, saying that these primitive traps never work or rarely work. In the right situation, they can work great. And uh, I show that in my videos, I have primitive traps on figure four deadfall, Paiute deadfall, Tai Long, bamboo traps, the scissor trap for deadfall, the scissor snare, Spanish windlass. These all can be easily built and I show that they can catch and kill animals very quickly. So there are examples out there of how these traps can work in the right scenarios and I think that they are a little too quickly to write off primitive traps and they think that it's a mental illness basically that people who think that primitive traps work. Now someone that's really opened my eyes up to this primitive trapping survival controversy and I've learned a lot from is a great channel that I want you to check out. The Wooded Beardsman has a great series. He's put a lot of effort into producing it and they are like an episode of a TV series. It's called Beyond Survival, The Wilderness Living Challenge and you should really check it out. You'll learn a lot about actually surviving in the wild up in Canada where he has a lot of resources and learns a lot about the reality of survival. So check out his channel and let me know what you think about the controversy and some of the points I made about survival traps and trapping. I'll continue to do more primitive traps and I always show them in action catching real animals because they are effective. Um, so thanks for watching and check out the other channels I mentioned.